Hello there everyone and welcome back to Tiono, in which we're playing as the state of Guangdong using the sub-mod Sony Plus. But it's 1957 we must talk about as we're still trying to uh, improve the regions of Guangdong and have to deal with the Silicon Delta's product cycle. Transit. The train rose to the elevated platform and land went through the passenger doors the moment they were open. He stood grasping a handhold. After one or two minutes, the door slid shut and the train shuddered. Lam could feel the train wheels grinding as it picked up the momentum. There they went, shuddling into Guangzhou. Years before, Lam would have driven all the way from his home in the outskirts to the precinct. Now work was a train right away. As he clambered at full speed, Lam had all the time in the world to think of the world and where he was. So much had changed. Soaring from the underground, the route gave Lam a view of the city skyline. There was a somewhat bright morning. The neon signs were now inert, dark as the sun broke through the gloom. The skyscraper still an alien dominating sight after all these years, tore through the sight lines in brutal needle-like steeples draped in concrete. Lam adjusted his tie, was hot in the carriage. And I remembered Hong Kong, Port Shore, years of chasing empty dreams in a city whose decay came with a startling death knell. There are two men who tired themselves with the earth belt towards towers that reach up into the heavens, creating paradises of concrete above the inferno that reached below. He stapled his fingers and saw them clearly for the first time in a long time. He was no innocent. He to keep order in his place, he shoved away the hungry masses. It took a different kind of person. Was he human after all? Or was he a molded creation of this monstrosity fired in the kilns of suffering until what emerged was a ceramic compression of a man? He knew not what answers would satisfy the fiery, burning questions that dodged his conscience. Closing his eyes, Officer Hayashi looked ahead and saw the train rolling into the gentle slope leading into the darkness. Throughout, through all the years, to the past, to all the years, hence, yeah. So we got a mass by mass radio time, we've got force over time. I still got 46 days for this, but there was a comment asking if we could show you the natural spirits for Viet Minh. So 20 years of resistance. Victory in Lang Song, we have a cup of coffee or two. As well as comrades from the North. The TC-1010 tape recorder. After the days of bulky vinyl rec records and tape reels, the advent of cassette tapes allowed hours of audio to be stored in a desk drawer, quickly making them massively popular with the project, or public. The main drawback up to this point has been the fact that the audio must first be recorded on some other medium and transferred, as there's no way to record audio directly onto cassette. Sony now has the solution in their TC-1010 tape recorder. Using a cassette input in an electric microphone, it allows for the recording of crisp audio with minimal static. Perfect for journals and police interrogators. A recording studio in your pocket, and we'll get the vent idiot box very soon. But let's take a look-see. 22% not bad, 65 billion. Oh, that's not good for debt, but you know it is. Deficit is a little high. Inflation is actually a little high too, which really sucks. Um, but other than that, we're just kind of hanging out. We're waiting until everything collapses around us. Ah, but Lorenzo thought he might have made the smartest purchase of his life. When Sony had launched a new 5-inch TVs in Italy, he'd been there on the first day to pick one up for his uh, limousine. Lorenzo's wife had balked at the price, but he knew a little entertainment would make the drives work go much faster. His guests were certainly impressed, the three expensively dressed businessmen gazing at the technological marvel before them like children. was playing some soap opera. Um, Lorenzo didn't watch them himself, but his compatriots were enthralled, so what do you think? One of the men, a balding fellow named Andrea, responded, It's ingenious, without taking his eyes off the TV. I meant about the new arrangement for oil exploitation rights. Oh, another of the men looked at him confused. Uh, is that what we're talking about? Yet mere more distractions. And now for everyone's favorite events, aftershocks. Even if the fires of the Middle Eastern oil fields were whirled away from Guangdong, the effects were so palpable and immediate. Plastics, the wonder material so used for insulating electronics and absorbing the heat generated by Guangdong's myriad product catalog. When the oil flow of oil stopped, the hoarding began, first by the companies that could see the storm approaching, and then the average consumer when the average price had risen threefold. Scarcity, when mixed with fear and uncertainty, proves highly combustible. As the plastic shock spread from commodities, trading floors, boardrooms to the living room, rumors spread about what would disappear next. Food, clothing, stationaries. Many women alike flooded their local supermarkets and corner shops, seeking to buy in bulk anything that would provide them with some security. Better now, they reasoned, while the price was right, and there was a frenzy, a feeling of the world coming undone. Above them, student ex executives furrowed their brows and sucked their teeth at the projected losses. The running flowing or filling row after row on ledgers projected from the solitary screens. Cost overruns, falling demand, undershot targets, the number all told a single, single story and they braced themselves for difficult times to come. Far beyond the confines of Guangdong, bureaucrats and politicians scattered across the hallways of power in Tokyo, as unsettled by the oil crisis as compatriots in Koshu. With a bigger picture in mind, they concerned themselves with how the best to serve Japan's interests, leaving Guangdong far behind. The machine comes to a halt. Oh, the patience of the Empire of Japan and the Japanese expatriates and so in Hong Kong runs sin. Oh boy. Another decade, another disaster on the Pearl River Delta. A shock to the system. The rug has been pulled from out from under us. Tokyo has once again disconnected one of our vital streams of capital and once again pushed us from the nest that was the co prosperity sphere, the only vital tool Morita needed to continue its experiment of enlightened self interest. The economy has been into a state of panic. Prices on most goods, especially raw materials and consumer goods, have soared to previously unfathomable heights see unseen in Guangdong before him, or having an impact as citizens and companies alike choose to limit their spending and save up cash. 
the productivity, economy, and government of Guangdong has faltered, but Marita has already come this far. The world looks at Marita to walk away. Or, or walk to the talk. Oh boy. Once again alone, it seems that the crisis has affected our Japanese benefactor in much the same way as us. Communications have been cut, much like our previous funding. Our precious funding. It seems that we will have to have make do with the tools currently at our disposal. Our issues are plenty. The government itself must be sustained at all costs, but the private sector must be maintained too. Most companies are currently unable to do or to adjust to our a price inflated economy, and as it stands, we're begging for government intervention. We will not leave them out to dry. Slow motion. Now I know how Suzuki felt, Murita muttered, feeling his eyes drawing out after hours of being immersed in the chaotic reports coming out of the Middle East. There's no avoiding what comes next. <clears throat> War destruction, worst of all scarcity. The implications of the global oil shortage had already set Guangdong's investors on edge, with a share of price of the five companies all tanking minutes after the markets had opened. Seems not seen since the implosion of these two holdings. A scene that neither Murita nor Lee had hoped to see repeated in their lifetimes. Lee knew that he would be delivering even worse news in the days to come, even if that was cloaked in the jargon of production delays, skyrocketing input costs, and creating consumer demand. The forecast from government economists and his own in-house strategists reunited on one point. There would be no stopping a second wave of layoffs and furloughs, necessary to save the greater whole, to keep the ship of state off the system sinking under the waves. Merida and Lee exchanged a haunted stare, a cold sweat trickling down their backs. They understood the necessity of what was to come, and they dreaded the cost to be paid, and broken promises and betrayed hopes. Whatever trust we have now, okay, I'll let Lee said hesitantly, we could lose in a heartbeat from both the populace and our investors. We can't get this wrong. Easier said than done, okay, Kishin. Merida exhaled sharply, but we've been defying the odds from day one. This, this is just one more of the same. Their dreams would not die here. Our promises. It's easy to be generous in times of plenty, but when times are hard. Our companies. Our promises. Social spending has helped our struggling people, from the Chinese and the rural parts of our nation to the Zuzhan and Javis expatriates in our cities. It would be a stretch to say that without these pol policies, much of the nation would slide back into the poverty that gripped it before Marita's rise of power. And the funding handed out to us by the Japanese that was in turn was used to fuel the social warfare as it evaporated. And with that fact comes a choice. We can either continue our social spending policy in these trying times or attempt to cut loose ends. No matter what the future may reveal, the present is always crystal clear. It would not be an easy choice. Panic at the supermarket. To Li Wai, it has seemed when she left today that would begin with the normal run of the nearby Chung Kong supermarket to buy toilet paper. Apparently, they had been running out across the city recently. Or at least that was what her mother told her. The whole story seemed absurd to her. She not questioned her mother's words though, and made sure to wake up sickeningly early in order to arrive a few uh, arrive early a few minutes at least before the doors were open due to open. When she arrived, there was already a crowd jostling for positions next to the door. It was all incredibly surreal that Wai, seeing all the people who were there for nothing more than something as trivial as food or roll of toilet paper, had become so impatient. Nevertheless, she took her place and waited. By the time the doors had opened the size, the anger and the crowd had swelled. Afterwards, she had never recalled if it was a de debilitating tiredness or the force of the crowd which caused her legs to give way, but none of that mattered in the moment as the crowd swallowed her whole. She could not immediately be sure of the sickening crunch she had heard came next from her. All she could feel was a rush and heave of the crowd on top of her. Several agonizing moments passed before the police arrived. Several more went by before they could break up the worst of the crutch. To a wise relief, she was able to pull herself back up without much pain. She soldiered on into the shop, even though she did not really expect to find much left. All she could think of was the same worrying question that circled around her head. If Chung Kong can't manage, who can? Pivot and push. Marie de Kiao had seen the reports regarding the new, ice, new crisis facing the state. For the oil crisis, all the news and internal signs he, uh, or signals he had been receiving over the past week were all bad, with the oil from the Middle East expected to dry up within the coming weeks, most of Guangdong's vital industries would also be forced to come to a grinding halt. And if that happened, the protests outside would surely cut turn into riots. Something needed to be done fast, but for once he felt stumped. He slumped in his chair and his hands massaging the new many wrinkles that were covering his face. He picked up another piece of the paper with a PTRG stamp at the top. The part detailed several vehicles, uh, prototypes were being adapted for desert and mountain operations given the current crisis. The prototypes were expected to be ready. Within a month? Surely Guangdong could get the rights to several oil ex sources in exchange for these nations to get an advantage in the conflicts with equipment devised by the PTRG? Yay! The chief executive put on his jacket and prepared to leave his office. If this report was true, then it could very well be the solution that Guangdong needs to at least soften some of the effects of the current crisis, but first, he needs to verify the report he was given. One wrong move here, and his vision for Guangdong could be snuffed in an instant. The lights in the labs come alive! Yay! Oh yeah! Attack helicopters, I love them! Oh, let's send our boys to the Middle East! Uh, who are we gonna help out though? Because right now we have no corruption, which is great. Oh, attack helicopter. Sweet. What happened to the Baathists? No. Iraq? No. Uh, Islamic Republic? I see Japan here. Who did you send volunteers to? Iraq. Oh. I guess we're not going to Iraq. 1947 first. Well, let's read about that one. 
Lieutenant Moritoke stood uh, still after uh, alighting from a streetcar in central Tokyo, pensively watching the evening crowds mill about in front of the Eno station. Life in Tokyo was picking up pace with a war over the monuments to eschew luxury and merriment had quickly lost traction amongst the public eager to bask in Japan's moment in the sun. Yet Morita still wore his navy uniform. Even as the public celebrated victory, his superiors insisted that they would need to be ready to fight the next war, with better bullets and smarter bombs. Nothing had changed in Morita's life for years, even as the world was moving on. Hello, Morita. Ibuka. Morita wheeled towards the familiar voice of Ibuka Masaru, dressed smartly in a civilian suit. I've met you since you left the wartime research committee. I've been busy sitting in my own company, Ibuka said. People are going to want something new, something fun, now that the war is over. If I don't sing the exact same thing, what are you working on? You know all those magnetic data tapes? I thought there might be a way to play music from them. Film reel meets vinyl record. Sounds fun, Rita stopped for a second, which was all it took to come to his decision. Can I join you? If you need money, I can ask my relatives. They get us they run a small uh, miso business back. No need to book his eyes lit up at Murray's offers, he's grabbed Murray's hand. I've got funds for my father in law already, but I need people like you. So who can we send volunteers to? Egypt? Actually, what are the requirements for us? Conduct nighttime operations, mountainous combat operations. Oh, okay, so we can do this one first. Uh, Sultanate Egypt Republic Oh there we go. There you go. You're going to get, go get the uh, helicopters already. We're we'll probably going to need them. Mountainous combat operations. Equipment is part of a battle plan. Um, these equipment and conditions exceeding 30 degrees Celsius. Which all makes sense. Can you imagine, like, Sony, like, engaging in, like, military missions like this? Do they do that already? I don't think they do it in our timeline. That'd be really cool. So how bad is the uh, this? You know, we still have growth. Inflation is insane. Oh, my God. High growth? Well, I wouldn't say that's not really high. Base inflation rate's really high, though. Um, all right. I'm not going to do anything here. We have a really bad yearly deficit. Oh, God, that's not good. The growth is still going up, though. That's good, at least. All right, once again, a loan, our promises, and eventually, what, the review government contracts. Poverty rate will begin to slowly worsen. Decrease social costs. Oh, God. Maintain government projects. We're going to continue improving growth. More pressure to be put on Morita. Will he snap if he do that? Hiring freeze. Chase economies of scale. Well, we'll probably maintain government projects, even though Guangdong faces a second economic crisis in a decade. That is no excuse to fall back into old dangerous habits. Despite the cost for fiscal rectitude by our investors, the best way to get the economy back in shape when times are hard is not by closing the government purse strings. Our creditors might benefit from such an approach, but we would be paying our debts on the back of popular penury. Government continues to spend to keep people at work and pay them for doing so. In a time when the private spending is depressed, keeping government infrastructure spending will be up, up uh, will be a valuable way to put money, pe money in people's pockets, and the people surely appreciate having food on their tables in rough, tough times. Strong red line. An opportunity. We could probably do that one, yeah. We're going to do as much as we possibly can for the people. But there's no guarantee for anything here. Downward spiral. The cabinet meetings were hardly the highlight of the chief executive's day. They often descended a fiddly labyrinth of political intrigue and an endless analysts. Uh, Murdy could hardly remember the time when he felt so keen to get stuck in these fine details. Um, it all felt like such a chore now. It didn't help that every single new report only made the situation more bleak. The tax revenues fell, the cost of social programs rose, and the business confidence was oxymoronic. Everything was plummeting from bad to worse to abysmal. Still, it did not stop, of course. And this level of demand for essential persists. Then we'll face potential disaster shortages in the coming weeks and maybe even days. The level of panic is completely unsustainable and enough, Marita demanded, though he himself had nothing to interject with. In fact, there was nothing he could add besides the stony silence. The situation was utterly hopeless, and was more than everyone there knew it. It was as if they could smell the growing weakness of his position. Recovery was a long way off. The only thing Marita could wish for was not following his suit's spectacular fall from grace. After a while, Matsushita spoke up, trying to coax the chief executive out of his forlorn state. I'll request support from Tokyo as soon as possible. I have some contacts who at least hear us out. But the words were worthless. Japan was never going to give up valuable resources in times like these. It's all fading away. Where are we at? Um, so, the desert, mountains, equipment. Battle plan. Yeah, desert and mountains, though. So. There's no mountains down here. The mountains are all up in the northern Iraq. So, hmm. What is this valley? Oh, that's the desert to here. Over here. It's plains. You can come down here, maybe. Contraction. The oil crisis was now in full swing. Uh, and the things have gone hell. Free people in Guangdong were more aware of this, the bitter fact, than General Nagano Shigeto of the Imperial Japanese Army. A phone call had come through for the chief executive in Nagano. It was Consul General Takashima uh, Masuo, who had been summoned back to Tokyo on an urgent basis, of course. 
Well, as one might expect during an energy crisis of world historic proportions, Takashima, not only news of woe, this and support traditionally given by the Foreign Ministry or the Greater East Asian Ministry have been cut off from recommendation of this or that good for nothing bureaucrat scrounging around for scraps for his worthless own department. What made the gun really gnash his teeth was the order sent through the Dai Tao Shou and the Dai Honai to Takashima's belt. The Guangdong Kampai Tao was to have its operational capacity cut drastically, and its operators were to be redeployed elsewhere in the co-prosperity sphere to meet the greater needs. For all that Nagano had hated to admit it, Japan simply did not have the money or the will to keep order in the state of Guangdong as they once had. Nagano only one hope, the police, which had acquitted itself decently enough during the Yasuda crisis all those years ago. If they now to prove themselves unworthy, Nagano muttered, I know quite well what I'm going to do and I'll do it without my regret. Without regret. If they cannot hold themselves together by the Emperor, I'll do it for them. Nice. Actually, that's help us out at all? No. Okay. In the Middle Eastern Boondoggle. Ah, oh, this is to the commander of IJ Guangdong Formations. The Greater East Asian Ministry is pleased to announce that the state government of Guangdong has volunteered to send a research division to Middle Eastern um, countries to help the Greater East Asia co prosperity sphere in its fight against the West forces of Western imperialism. General Gano, oh, you're over. Oh, you're down here. I didn't realize that. My bad. I thought you were in the north for some reason. Um, General Gano was in death of rage and despair he never felt before. Well, I'm sure he has. Uh, he scribbled out the fight against forces of Western imperialism, writing it over to get Japan oil and some oil for Guangdong too, <clears throat> and effing grubs of money uh, selling BS bloody weapons of Arab imbeciles while we're at it. Um, he smashed the pen upon his knee, whistling and painting through it in the garbage and tore the paper to shreds. What the heck was this? Um, they're asking for soldiers to put their lives on the line as if they're mercenaries, fighting for a little profit as a motivation, putting their lives on the line as, as mere sales representatives for the worthless corporations here. Is this the life of a soldier these days? As we got a pace back and forth in anger, he yearned for the honorable to him service he had done in China for 40 years. Um, this isn't what it's meant to be a short soldier. This isn't. The general cried out as he realized just how important his rage was. Nagano sat down and put his head in his hands, knowing no matter how strongly he despised it, what Guangdong made him do, there's not a single thing he could do to stop him. Darn it all to heck, man. Sounds about right. Is this? No, it's not desert. It's not desert. Darn it. I don't think we'll be able to get very much done here. Left to dry. Takashimo Masuo was brow for in displeasure at what he did say. Yeah, more silence, he knew he had no choice but to say it. Chief Executive, it galls me beyond belief to tell you this, but the Senate simply cannot help the state of Guangdong at this time. Matsushita represses a scoff, and why is that, Consul General? The Consul side. The Foreign Affairs Ministry has been sending me missive after missive. Uh, rumors of disloyalty across the entire government. The military and so on, rumblings out of Nanjing, and now, for good measure, economic instability from this thrice darn oil crisis have them saying their hands are tied. But we need desert. Um, and what will the practical implications of this be, Lee asked, even though he, Marita, and Masuchita already knew the answer to all this. Well, sir, the ministry has redirected the budget while I was at your mark for Guangdong back to the home islands. For what is worth, Chief Executive, I'm sorry, I really am. But for all their earnestness, Takashima's apologies meant nothing to the leaders of Guangdong, nor were they enough to lift a shadow over their minds. As Marita and the cabinet expected to hear this, they merely stood up as one, turned around, and left in a foul mood. Leaving the Consul General's office, Marita turned his head back and shouted angrily, so much for the great East Asia, you, you guy. But they stopped himself, there's no point in causing more conflict. Yeah, there's no more point doing that. Um, superior combat with. We're in the wrong part. Your rock is almost fully done. My god, how fast do they take out your rock? I'm going to just get more combat experience just because we can, but still. Hey, equipment. And superior combat with. That's good. Yeah, that was... Insanely fast. Oh my god. Sultanate of Oman. Oh, Oman is going to be very good for us to fight, because there's mountains and hills here and whatnot, so we'd have to go to there. As much as I want to go to Sudan. Actually, I don't ever want to go to Sudan, but whatever. Economic check. Well, we almost have it. We're not contracting, are we? So 4% growth. 5 billion in deficit, you know. Um, Italian dominance. Nice. Draw red line. We could. Fairness. Or opportunity. Huh. This seems like the one we probably want to do. How much does Tokyo actually like us? 76%. Prime the pump, huh? More pressure we put on Morita. Because we got to balance. I think we have to balance it with Chong Kong as well. More growth is knife. Knife? Nice. I'm not going to make poverty worse. I, I will not do that. Yeah, we're going to do this one. I'll draw a red line, though. I don't mind sacrificing a seat, because we'll get a seat from the economic check, maybe. We already have 32, which is not bad. 
an opportunity. Hard times are simply another name for an opportunity. Acquisitions made on the cheap. Yeah, deals made in desperate circumstances. Yeah, like hopefully when the stock market crashes again. As the Japanese economy and its corporate appendages in Guangdong restructure themselves in the face of the oil crisis, we should play a coordinating role in uh, pulling the resources of our Zhujin business to undertake public works projects on behalf of the government at cheaper prices than the Japanese. The government will save money while delivering services the Japanese can no longer provide satisfactorily. If the Zhujin expands the shares of Guangdong's economy in the process, so much the better, though the Japanese business community will no doubt be displeased. Pretty frenzy. Yeah, I need uh, uh, rise to yesterday's price. Don't give me that BS. <clears throat> you want radios? Go get in line. Production's down. I've only got enough for three orders. A shipment of jade in Nanjing? We can arrange that. No worry about custom. Stanley Ho frowned, fidgeting with his cufflinks as he inspected one of his legitimate operations. A trading company, tying Guangdong and the wider sphere together in a web of cash and promises. Trading in goods, legal or otherwise, had been his business long before he'd fallen into, into with Marita Kao and Li Keqing, and never heard to keep one finger firmly on the pulse of commerce. What he saw, what he felt, coming from an instinctually familiarity with or an instinctual familiarity with the commercial cycle was worrying. Faces were tense as staff chasing desperate deals to lock in revenues and orders dried up. As pickup partners on the ballroom floor, the pastime of the business the lead had dwindled. There was no time to be dancing, it seemed, as the oil crisis sent Guangdong tumbling into an abyss. Um, instead, Stanley knew that his other associates, those dealing in favors and blood, the currency of desperate men, were busier than ever. Everyone needed something to fall back on, there were the companies of the state could not provide. The tribes always found a way to help, for a price. Those two elements, taken together, nodded Stanley, not for any personal reason. He'd profit in any case, but knowing that every soul fleeing from society seeks souls with the underworld, was a soul turning in their back on Marita's promises. Would Guangdong devour its children after all? So to fund our social and admin programs, we will have to minimum at least 25% on social and admin. More pressure, more costs, and our GDP growth will continue, continue to go up, though. Scott Sparrow. Sony's new chopper. I have been very, uh, very, very responsive controls. Very cool. As Taka Yanga, Yanagai had found out the hard way. He nearly crashed the thing into the ground his first time out. The older model was big, bulky things that flew with all the grace of a walrus and took ages to move anywhere. This one, though, was lightweight, flexible, and supremely effective. Um, ta Taka Yanagai was a scout for his unit, bringing his chopper up just ahead of the front lines to spot enemy dispositions. He relayed his report over the radio to the commander of the ground and zipped away before the fighting began. If he was spotted, the chopper was usually agile enough to evade enemy SAM systems, and even had a few barrages of rockets for if fighting became necessary. Thermal imaging and night vision cameras meant Takayanga guy was able to spot enemies in the cold and any weather condition, most importantly, at least. For the army procurement office, the chopper used only a fraction of fuel for the older models of the older models thanks to how light it was. War has never been more sleek. Keep knocking this down, y'all. We like Dofar or we like Oman? Nice. Keep working on it. I really want to get through efficient administration. That'll save us a lot of money. But happy 1971, everybody, as my voice cracks, apparently. How bad is this? Oil crisis in Silicon Delta. Oh my god. Even though we get negative 35% stability and war support, we still have 100% stability. GNG status dummy R GDP. Huh. Alright. Oh, I don't think there's any mountains down here, though. Well, let's see, there's deserts. Deserts and, and hot conditions, probably. So, I'll do an opportunity and then prime the pump. I want more growth, nothing to spare. Yeah, no. The primary lesson of Guangdong's response to the Asuda crisis was the scaling back spending in a crisis. Uh, even if reassuring to our investors, Rux Havoc on the economy and the general populace. We would ensure that our people have the money to spend and to keep the economy moving, even if it means putting money in the pockets of the people of our own accounts. Our creditors may protest, but we would rather see every yen go to revive the economy rather than paying off our debts. Slow down. Was what Lee Chung was noticing these days of the darn oil crisis were on. Ah, uh, everything was slowing down, but the rate at which concerns and worries were piling up. The work orders of this Chung Kong factory's job were slowing. That where they used to come in like crap through a goose. Now they can't come through a trickling tap of oil, water, about to be turned off. And the darn hand was on the knob to turn it off fully, too. That gnawing fear, the fear that had eaten him ever since Y came back empty-handed from her toilet paper run some time back, it was no longer gnawing anymore. No, it was stabbing to the skin and staying there like a shark that would not let go of its prey. Of course, the government kept offering assurances. So as citizens of Guangdong, you may rest assured that the government of the state of Guangdong will provide all the needs of the population and so as to ensure everyone's survival through the crisis, etc., but nobody's taking that at face value. At Chun's uh, factory workers and the factory middle management, who have been on increasingly good terms as the years worn on, decided to work together to ride the crisis out. A few of them whispered about an association of benevolent businessmen that were con connected with the government. The GFT, I think it was, Chun muttered. Maybe it's time I paid him a visit. Oh god, no, please no. We need oil? We got plenty of oil. We're full up on oil, y'all. Uh, you want another prison? An extra, uh, compliance growth and acquired garrison factor, huh? Gives extra stability if you have more prisons. 
Army base, organization, mobilization, speed, manpower, uh, a little bit more. Honestly, schools would probably be, I like schools the most, probably. But we can't build any more schools, god dang it. We got too many schools. Admin offices. Oh no, there you go. Don't bother us again. Don't talk to me or my son ever again. Huh. There you go. Have fun with that. 1949, uphill. Uh, after two years, a culmination of Murray Denny Booker's efforts, a bulky box wrapped in a full leather casing and topped with two rails of magnetic tape, sat neatly in the cardboard box. Tokyo Tsushin Kogyo. Tokyo Communications, at its first tape recorder, sized to fit neatly into the average charm, allowing anyone to record and listen to their favorite radio broadcast at any time. And I think Tokyo Shibara beat us to market, Ibuka muttered, bitterness creeping into his voice, all because they had a bigger loan from Mitsui Bank uh, than we did. As infuriating, Murillo was less restraining his anger. Mitsui is supposed to be our main bank, but they had two bets. Now our sales are slipping and we have to loan still to repay back. The two quietly digested their thoughts in the darkened office, situated on the top floor of the combined office factory building set up. They tried not to think about the workers who had left a few hours ago and how many they might have to let go permanently. No, thinking about what could have been, Ibuka said, retrieving a stack of trade journals, all in English, transistors, something better than vacuum tubes, are the future. Um, Murray's eyes widened the foreign documents, their pro provenance evident by the IJNs and classification stamps on the covers. Do you think we can make these locally? Give me enough time and I can do it, Ibuka said with a self-assured grin. We just need the funds. Uh, Murray rubbed his chin, running through his options. I'll try. Give me my family if I have to. Well, we can't do this forever. Oof. A barrage of them? Yes, a barrage of them. If it hadn't been a barrage, then it's like a flood or a torrent or something. Yeah, the Koshu uh, stockbroker said to his colleagues in one of the few quiet break rooms available on the always noisy stock exchange. Um, the colleague took a sip from his hip flask. That's rather concerning for Sony, I won't lie, at a time like this, too. Um, yeah, rumors have it that the investors are panicking. His colleague scoffed. An investor always panics. What are they panicking for to that? The first stockbroker opened a notebook. From what I've been told, Submarita spends more time in the chief executive's office and his own corporate headquarters in Hong Kong. Probably no big deal, to be honest. It's all these idiot speculators that want to get rich quick that are quitting now. And in any case, people are still buying Sony stock anyway, so it's all good. That's great, the colleague said. <clears throat> then he lowered his voice to whisper, but there's one thing that has been suspicious to me this entire time. What's that? Who's buying? How many of them are there? And how much are they each buying? If it's one group of people, well, I'm worried that they're buying a stake that could cause Sony some big trouble if push comes to shove. And the first uh, stockbroker turned gillet. Oh, crap. You're on something. I need to check this out right now. Still not bad. Not, didn't get any better, but didn't get any worse, really. Uh, double check here. Can we do anything here? Yes, we can. Full on, full control. Because we're going to need full control later on. Opportunity, prime the pump, hold the line. Increases growth, increases Chinese export. Increases Japan support. Increases Japan support. We shall provide. It's not enough to uh, provide. Um, minimum assurances and took a payout to the unemployed in the face of the second major economic dislocation in a decade. We must ensure that those who are worse affected have what they need to stay secure until time's approved. The Japanese might call it some fair redistribution, but the unemployed and the homeless neither work nor spend, and without their labor or their wallets, even soon the Japanese will feel the pinch. Is it hot here? No. Dang it. Mountain, desert time. Oh, I'll just go here to then. Oh, you're not in route. That's why you're not getting your things done. God dang it. That was a waste of time. Ruin, collapse, and disaster. Little Cross was having his way with the Guangdong. But the business state's leadership was forced to drop everything and pick up the pieces, just as the predecessors in the last decade had been forced to do when you see the collapse. Yamachi Hiroshi wandered the uh, uh, barren streets of Koshi amidst the hardships of the crisis. Those statue of sons of economic depression and financial troubles were everywhere. The unlit street lamps, lack of people, and the few people present looking somewhat disconsolate. The whole nine yards above all, the skies were dark with clouds of smoke. Oh, this is a mountain top towel. Yay! Yamauchi Hiroshi, one of the barren streets of Koshi amidst the hardships of the crisis. Um, those total signs of economic depression and financial troubles were everywhere. On the street lamps, lack of people, the few people present looking somewhat disconsolate. The whole nine yards, both, oh, I just read this, both the skies were dark and with clouds and smoke. The scene. I was reminiscent of the days of the Suda crisis. Nintendo had only been in Guangdong a few years back then. What a terrible time it had been to try to do business. The political turmoil, the intense struggles of the populace, the abject chaos everywhere, those still make him shudder, almost as if the, uh, much of the prospect of going back to that madness did. Trying to suppress his fear, Yamauchi kept walking slowly, methodically, hoping perhaps against hope that the clouds would clear away soon, one step, soon after another. But to what end? Anti OFM protests, huh? Alright, so we won. Which is good. We're actually close with nighttime and mountain operations. Um, a 
Oh, there you go. Nice. Brought the pump, nothing to spare. So this, more pressure we put on Lika Shing. I'm okay with that. We only do everything. To succeed in Lee's plan, we must allocate sufficient funds for innovation. And the money be allocated to innovation, overclock design. If we make it, then we then they will buy it. Iteration, revolution. Seek financial finance. And we're going to prime the pump next. We're going to put a lot of pressure on Rita Kale, but then our companies. The better about Guangdong and economy, many of our electronics companies have suffered much from the global spike in oil prices and the drastic decrease in consumer spending. Power. The live blood of our nation is under threat and we must take action quickly. So in Chongkong, two of the most prominent electronics companies in Guangdong must adapt to these new towns with innovative business practices and new manufacturing techniques. Our electronics must be sold, also the two vital companies that have fallen into relevance like so many before. Promising proposals. Oh, even worse. Oh my good god. Holy schnicky daddies. Oh man, our economy is going to sort of start collapsing then. Look at this type of number. Promising proposals. A company man, businessmen in worn suits, with factory foremen in stain and blackened coveralls, review the papers laid out before them and faintly lit a conference room. Their plastic chairs creaking against the cracked floor. A cohort of Zuzhen deputies and representatives whispered excitedly, restraining their energy as to go keep prying eyes away from the office of the Guangdong Federation of Tradesmen. Some promising proposals here remarked a suited man at the head of the table, road maintenance, cement orders, public construction. All exclusively marketed uh, to upsetting Zuzhen contractors with minimal, a factory manager said read aloud, experience required. Out of the room buzz of the words, every contract, one was a job earned, another day of food and wages, a ray of hope to capture and take back to the factories and workplaces. It was reassurance, in short supply these days, that they were not being forgotten by the chief executive, who had promised so much in the past, only to have, only to always favor those at Sony Chen Kong's beck and call. Now how the Japanese are going to react? Chun asked from amongst uh, the assembled delegates, instantly feeling just every pair of eyes sw swiveling towards him. Are we ready for what they'll do now that they're poaching the contracts? Screw them, the suited figure barked. Then he was with a forced slap. I'm sure they won't miss a few jobs going our way, but they did. But they did. This pains me. Inflation's better though, at least. Of course, if you don't know, if you don't have high growth, you can't get penalized for huh, high inflation. Somewhat. Somewhat, of course. Well, here we got mountains and deserts. So, what are we doing Duff for? Having a genocide, probably. Uh, conditions exceeding 300 bunch of degrees. Ah, where are you guys at? You done? Oh, where are you guys at? There you go. Time going real quick. Prime the pump, and then to our company's next. Working luncheon. To an outside observer, the executive luncheon between Matsushita Masaharu, Ibuka Masaru, and Nikoma Kenichiro was maddeningly pedestrian. A polite comment on stock prices from Matsushita, grumbling industry observation by Ibuka, a barbed angle on the news from Komaya, the three danced artfully around any substantial subject under the glare of the public eye. That is until they broached a the topic dearer than all of them recently, the falling or failings of Chief Executive Marita Akeo. Matsushita, your company man, same as any of us, Kamai said, opening his arms and compass a simple trio. You must have thought about Marita's programs as a businessman, if not as external secretary. Matsushita's eyes born in Kamaz as he slowly inhaled, the light of his cigarette glowing vividly. It's not the decision I would have made, he finally ventured, tapping nearly half his cigarette's length of ash into a waiting tray. Are we surprised, he book remarked, loudly enough for the surrounding tables to hear. Murray has always been willing to throw away moment money for his pet passions, as of right now. He wants to make Wang Dong into a charity case. Well, Murray has taken his eyes off profits. I'm sure he won't complain if we help ourselves with what we want. He won't, he, what he won't, he won't have. Come on, chuckled darkly at Ibuka's words, but Matsushita said nothing to correct their assessment. Never run up your enemy while they're making a mistake, after all. The discussion on the table quickly turned to the other matters as the next course arrived, but everyone mulled over to unspoken sentiment sprouting in the room. How do I speed this along? Hold the line. More growth, I like that, and Japanese approval. We shall provide. Let's burn everything we've got. I think I read this one earlier, so. And we can tap additional resources, proclaim our solvency. We will court new investor funds by guaranteeing Guangdong solvency to the world, though they may not take its face value. Tab additional resources. Whatever the people require in time of hardship, we will provide them with economic reassurance or resources we set aside during the Silicon years. Because this puts more. Well, actually, we should probably do put more pressure on uh, this guy first. Well, we shall do. We shall do this one first. 
off the growth, and then we'll do like no other. Marita Kale, ever the patron of verifiable commerce and integrity, has made her preference clear. So in Hong Kong will not compro compromise on perfecting your com commodities quality, even if it means racking up the price tax to cover up our expenditures. Our people, the Zhujin, the Chinese, and Japanese, deserve the best we have to offer. Such has been our modus operandi. Oh, look at this. And the foundation upon which our stellar reputation solidified itself. Over the course of the five years of our tenure thus far, and with the crucial aid of our allies in the legislative council, we have the financial capability and the incentives to make sure it stays this way to entrench the brilliance of our craft within the Guangdong market and the Guangdong Saki once more. We're an enterprise like no other, and the freshly stoked demands coursing through our nation will serve as its greatest testament. Um, uh, look at this. Chief Executive Marita Keo suspected Japanese Consul General Takashi Mamasuo had a swap wall for several months. The prominent bags under his eyes and the disheveled combo over clearly indicated there was no real time for a personal care in the Japanese government in the midst of the oil crisis. Then again, he suspected Takashima would say much about the same about himself. Chief Executive Takashima said, It's well subdued from ex exhaustion. You might be aware that Tokyo has been dealing with other issues as of late. Marita Keo nodded. I have Japan. As his hands full with the oil crisis, I hope they have some sympathy for our predicament, factors outside of our control, of course. Indeed, Takashima sighed, sinking into a seat. There's no insistence for Guangdong to meet the pre-crisis economic targets now. A brief respite. 74 billion? You're not going to meet that. 1950, though. Drought. The technical demonstration of the familiar tones of NHK radio coming from the dissembled innards of a plastic casing the size of a bento box have been shortened to the point focusing on the promise of Tokyo Telecommunications lit as a design over financial details. There are responses of the Miss Bank loan officers, none of whom were senior executives, were as equally short. We will come back to you when we have a decision. Decisions, my butt, Marita spat. Hands thrust in his two pockets. Marita sweeps a stiff a year ago, and they'll do it again. Heck, we don't even know if some of these bankers are going to run some of our trade secrets over to Tokyo Shibara or whoever else they might work with. We took everything we have, our relatives, our savings, everything, just to get a prototype together and pay the employees. A book aside, we'll have to retool the assembly lines to get this to production, and that starts to take money we don't have. You warned me about this when we started last year. If going to the big banks is a dead end, then I don't mind starting small. Door to door, word of mouth, finding investors the hard way, Marita said agitatedly. This is our project, and we can make it work our own way. After we tapped our bank accounts and tested the limits of our own relatives' patients, Ibuka answered. Um, this isn't tofu, Morita. It's not cheap or easy enough to make and sell door-to-door -door day after day. Two stood at an intersection, waiting to step uh, over a dividing line in their own lives. Ibuka had the last word as the crowds stepped forward in the street. Let's keep trying? Yeah, we're going to do like no other first. I need more pressure on leakaging and uh, the next product quality we need to do, too. Increase the next... The next release product's profitability by 7.5%. Except customer needs. Let's make it easier for all of us here. We'll have less profitability, but it makes it easier. Hmm. Can you get your butts over here? Even if you're like not like super good. That's okay with me right now. I don't care. Nice. There you go. Oh, you made it. Oh, is he? Oh, you're here too. Is it hot here? Oh, it must be really freaking hot. Yay! The results. On a stormy day in Hong Kong, Yoshikawa, Yo, Yasukawa Yoshiko looked at the mid-year statements of all the major corporations in Guangdong and she was deeply concerned by what she saw. Every company was suffering and the major companies were snuffing, was suffering right where everyone could see them. Uh, we must revise the profits forecast down was a common refrain across a hundred different prospects or reports. Worst of all the wounds that was Sony was suffering, Yoshiko knew that she knew and she could tell that even more clearly by reading their mid-year statement. Saddled with the twin burdens of governance of expanding the market share of Sony uh, Corporation, um, it was all too clear. Uh, they were overextended and they needed to find a way to adapt to the sudden economic shock rocked by the oil crisis. This was of great importance, as young Yoshiko knew. One of the major peculiarities of the state of Guangdong was that the politics was tied with economics. And if Sony were to fall beyond the competition, it wasn't just consumer confidence that was at risk, it was so, so much more. With that gravely concerning thought in her mind, Yoshiko put the report down and tried to keep calm. Less of chaos. Uh, uh, engulf and going down, engulf her own mind too. It was no easy task, as we did shock to the system. But you know what? We've already like seven shocks to the system. How about another? So we gotta wait for this one. So we should provide them. Honestly, you can just go here then. It's fine. It's okay. Hey, hey, that's better. It's getting better. Fuan Taika. External demand recovered. The chief executive's efforts to mitigate the impact of the oil crisis had an effect. Look at that. Yet the bleeding did not stop, and the instability did not improve. And the calm people, the boxing, the showmen, continued to suffer. But this time, unlike during Yasuda or the heck that had preceded it, it did not take it lying down. Increases in the price of imported rice and transport fares for key railways caused back to back civil protests over two weeks. It was nothing the police could not handle, but it still shook the leg on the governments as in another. It was increasingly obvious that the hardships of Yasuda were returning with a vengeance. Unlike with Yasuda, though, which was sure and sharp pain rapidly handled by a succession in the chief executive's office, long drawn out torture brought about by the oil crisis was driving people to a breaking point, and they were making it clearer. 
Big Hector posters and graffiti and other crude manifestations of dissent, easy to make, hard to eradicate, proliferated throughout the state of Guangdong like a metastasizing cancer. Still, the chief executive realized that he was having it worse than Suzuki ever had. So that's my coffee cup. Uh, let's see. So here, it's hot. We get the next level done. We're getting there. Yeah, we're getting there. Taking these guys out is going to be very tough. Shock to the system. Also in Guangdong, in fact, in its capital, in the office of the chief executive, Maruta Kao and Li Keqing were reviewing the exact same report Yoshiko had been reading. Like me no mistake about it, Kao, the situation is grimly sad. Maruta nodded his mood matching Li's. So any more than any of the corporation faced severe headwinds due to its overriding focus on consumer electronics combined with the burdens introduced by being the Li company in a corporatocratic system. As though these twin struggles, keeping the company's finances on an even keel would be even easier said than done. Oh, better military professionalism. Please, if you're wondering about that, please go ahead. Fantastic. One question overwhelmed the chief executive's mind. But what are we going to do about it? Fortunately for Marita, Lee had determined two potential approaches that could be taken. He detailed them for his friend's benefit. Oh, we're losing political power. Dang it. <clears throat> well, we can do two things. We can insist on quality and brand recognition and keep accepting customers' needs. Marita frowned, but that means accepting costs. Yes, that's also true. But then we could also instead double down, after all. We do know what they want and try to produce both quality and quantity on our own products. But that risks a huge bust. And of course, there's no question of us bringing others in. Lee nodded. Even Master Chuda, allied to us as he is, perfectly is, would jump at the opportunity to jump on us if he thought we were losing our edge. Murita agreed and thought about his options, and his end, he said, and accept customers' needs. Murita go with his own plan, keeping up some of his quality. We know what they want, let's give it to them. Oh, wait, what? Oh, whoops. Oh, well, we need to do that one. My bad. That's why I did a save, just in case. You now, accept their need, because as much as I like this one for more profitability, let's be easier. Uh, one of the surest outcomes of a recession is that customers tighten their purse strings, which leaves them able to pay less, ta le pay less exactly when they're pouring money into the product development. But let's take a Sony and Chung Kong's brand, and for our loyal customers, we cannot pass on the cost uh, to them. We'll continue to provide to uh, provider products at previous cost and accept the hit to our bottom lines instead. Goodwill, after all, is priceless, and tap additional resources, like we read earlier. And then eventually match, reduce demand. Yeah, we have to put more pressure on Li Keqing so we don't kill off uh, our guy here. Actually, we probably instead of doing this stuff, as much as I want to, uh, we probably should be on through this. Mass reduced demand. Even though this would be better. Unsold inventory is the bane of any company's existence. Emblematic of costs paid that are simply not being recouped. Whatever we have chosen to do on the question of price quality, we must make sure to match our overall production to the reduced demand of our customers. We'll ask our production lines and our partners to reduce production of the goods and reduce the shifts, which may help give some respite to our workers while protecting Sony and Chung Kong's bottom line at the same time. Fortuitous compassion. The clanking of steel and humming of machinery permeated throughout the facility. Accompanied by the omnipresent, obscuring gray fumes, combining to form a monotonous and drab atmosphere of ceaseless toil and dismal conditions. A notion of begrimed faces and solely clothing, moving in unison for the purpose of production. Li Chun stood among them, following orders and working to achieve the ultimate goal. To provide, especially during these past arduous months when the old crisis had destroyed the livelihoods of so many, to Guangdong society asunder. The mundane flow of production was disrupted by the loud ringing of a brass bell and the brittle voice of a Zhujin man standing atop of a makeshift platform. As clothes were unlike the rest of the workers, cleanly pressed and in pristine condition, a drastic contrast with the tattered and dirty shirts so many within the crowd. The administration of the state of Guangdong has given us welcome news. Furloughed employees shall be granted additional subsidies on behalf of the state and a measure to ensure that we survive and persist through this period of hardship with minimal issues and suffering. Beside him, a cadre of Japanese managers looked down in mild dissatisfaction. However, they ultimately felt indifferent about the matter. In the rest of the room, there were smiles and brief cheers, an hour of optimism and gratitude, a little, little sliver of hope. Jun returned to his duties, delighted and pleasantly surprised. Any kind of support all at all was welcome, and so no support from the government would help be a major boon. His family would endure, and they had to. A satisfying respite. Ooh, man, what happened here? Base rate, negative GDP growth. Oh, crap. This is what's killing us right now. Poverty was doing okay until we hit that, so. But we're do right, now doing like no other, which is good. Um, so, accept, customer, accept customer's needs like we read, as well as match reduce. Ugh, I can't speak anymore. Match reduced demand. So we're going back to Dongola, uh, help capitulate these guys, because right now all we need are left of the mountains. Routine disrupted. Oh boy. Um... As a chill winter ho howled around him, falling through the streets of Koshu, Mirai pulled his coat closer around him inside. He watched the steaming breath dissipate in the wind before the sound of a car engine alerted him to the arrival of his contact. The big Datsun pulled into view, a monstrous gas guzzler that could only have been made in the days of cheap oil. Despite everything that had happened, 
or that had happened, the riding and the inflation on the lines of the gas station this man simply could not abandon the high life so he no longer could afford. His contact was one Tsushida Miki, a Lego representative originally from Matsushita, however, his loyalties had shifted as of late. Matsushita, staggering under the blow of the old crisis, no longer had the money to subsidize his blowhard's extravagant lifestyle. Fujitsu, Mirai's employers, didn't either, but Mirai had been steadily drip-feeding Tsushida with small checks over the past few weeks, knowing that he was desperate enough to latch on to any hope of rescue from his creditors. Tsushida stepped out of his car, shivering as a gust of wind had hit him, um, and Mirai walked over. Words were exchanged, and Mirai handed him a paper bag, and it was over. Much different to the freewheeling days, the old freewheeling days, where Mirai would be taking men like Sushi to a five-star restaurant for a five-hour marathon of feasting and negotiation, but he supposed it was more efficient this way. The real crisis forces all to economize. This was originally for Masashi, so why do we get punished for this? Well, that makes no sense. That literally makes no sense. But whatever. What are we going to do here? Beat these guys up, maybe? fine. Get some more experience, why not? Oh, becoming Desert Fox, maybe? That'd be kind of good. Plenty of political power right now. Three years of Guangdong. Um, so, things to the civil service. Decrease corruption? Oh, that's not bad. One and a half percent, so I'll just do that one. Make it easy. Um, we can do this opinion stuff, too. Like no other. Except customers' needs. Rumbles. Mr. Li Xing. Years ago, when he became the newest of the five tycoons of Guangdong and many other times thereafter, he promised us to the moon. He said us to ensure that the five tycoons would not neglect the due concern to the people of Guangdong, that Chung Kong itself would care for us to the best of its abilities. Ooh, we've got a hole here. Um, now that the crisis has come around, instead of fighting for our interests against the Japanese occupiers, here you are going along with the plans to roll back the benefits you were allegedly fought so hard to obtain in the first place. What kind of nonsense is this? Do you have no shame? Are, you promises, are your promises meaningless? Were they only meant to secure power for yourself when you forgot the blessings you received and gave up righteousness? I expect an answer with this question, Wong H O or Wong H C. I know a lot of angry nonsense. Said the Chung Kong worker to his peers after skimming through the letter. The foreman rolled his eyes, go through it on the pile of the others. The pile was very high, it's been every day for the last several weeks. Nothing was very concerning. Or none of it was, but all of them were very angry, in any case. The CK postal men thought there was no point paying attention to the such trouble. They trusted Lee after all, still. September nineteen fifty one. Angels and demons. We've done everything we could over. Uh, but the sums didn't check out. The scaling production to a viable price point can, can't be done without more funds. Funds we don't currently have, with estimates yet, that may yet change. Remember to any book, I listened to the final report of Tokyo Communications Board meeting with student expressions, telling them what they already knew. They ordered the board to explore every option they have, and now everyone looked at them. You're all dismissed, Marita. Can I have a word? Ibuka dismissed the assembly, who all shuffled out of the room with the glum expressions. I got a phone call the other day, Ibuka said, not looking Marita in the eye. It was from Fuji, Fuji Sushinki Manufacturing. The Furukawa is a Batu's electronics arm. They've got word of the transistor radio project. Having a Batu at her back, even as one as small as Furukawa, would be a game changer, Murray replied. I'm not done. Fujitsu wasn't offering a loan or code of Emma. They want to buy us out. The two sat in silence as the book's words sunk in, with Murray's mouth hanging open until it could string together his thoughts in a coherent fashion. And so what? We go back to working someone else's payroll again? Murray sputtered, raising his hands in frustration, leaving the Navy, borrowing money from anyone and everyone we know, all just take orders from someone else. If you have a better idea, a book of fire back, I'm all ears. As they're falling from grace, like we all are. Good God. Are they replenishing? Yeah, they still can. Good. Geniality. Oh. Um. It was Takashima Day, a fact which made Murray Takeo want to kiss the floor beneath him. No military men, no officers, no hard stares from soldiers who thought themselves better than their negotiating partner. Just a bureaucrat and a relatively reasonable one, too. Murray Takeo hoped his feelings didn't show up through his expression. They would be rude after all, even if he figured it was entirely warranted. That'd be right through the report yet, Chief Executive. The Consul General's tired tone floated across the table through the haze. Murray Takeo nodded, taking a moment to sweep some of the hair back into his place. Um, we're in agreement, you and I, Tokyo. How does, often does that happen? A muted smile creased Takashima's face. Not often enough. Yes, the IJA will be available to contribute intelligence to your government when requested. Tokyo asked myself to deliver the good news and wished to mention that they hope such cooperation can continue. And uh, the chief executive considered whether they wanted to risk continuing on in the strain of thought. Where is General Nagano? I would have thought he wanted to be president at a meeting like this. He's out on drills, I'm afraid. A scheduling conflict. Very unfortunate. Another smile from the Consul General, and this time more of a relief than anything. Trust me, chief executives, it's better this way. No, believe me, I concur. I'm talking to a brick wall. That's not good. Uh, it wasn't always that Marie Takeo actually had a reason to talk to the attaché rather than the consul general. Often, his meetings with other men were born of accident and of disappointments. Um, the product of the consul general's busy schedule and the delight with which the chief executive or swore his counterpart took in, in torpedoing his plans. When it came down to police and military matters, though, there was no alternative but to, he, but to head to the rather barren office of Wang Jingzhu. 
Really, really, really wish it wasn't the case. Reading these terms, Chief Executive, leads me once again to mentioning how lackluster the efforts of the Guangdong police have been at gathering intelligence. Our agents in the camp attack constantly outstrip their work. Your policemen get in the way far more often than they help. That's an unfair attack, Marito Okeo responded, steepling his hands in an effort to keep them from clutching into fists. The police are doing the best to maintain order in some of the fastest growing cities on the continent. Without adequate help from either the camp attack or yourself, I'd have I'd half a mind to commend them for even maintaining order in such a state. The Tache scoff explained then at why most of most how my work mostly consists of cleaning up after your officers. He remained unmoving in his seat, fixing Morita K with a cold glare. Channel continued to cooperate with your policemen regardless of their mistakes and meeting time is up. I'll be moving staring and return to change nothing. Finally, the chief executive stood, allowing himself a shake of his head as he exited. How rude. Can we actually keep this up here? Dongolo? I don't know if we can actually hold this tile, though. Happy April, though. Hey, finally, we got an increase in admin efficiency. Oh, thank God. Jesus Christ, this is a very good one to get. It's probably the most important one out of all of them. We live in the managerial age after all. So more political power, better group of population, more stability, better ideology, drift defense, more supply range, better taxable population, social program cost factor goes down, which is huge for us. Huge. But we still have negative growth. Because GDP is, like, got off right now. Underworld abiding. If you don't need this, please go ahead. God dang it. So that, oh, actually, poverty's getting worse now. That's not good. So we can tax more people right now, but it looks like it hasn't done much, but whatever. It's a bit exhausting. Where did Kale wipe his brown frustration or frustrated weariness? I was just looking over the clock. I don't think you understand me. There were 20 seconds left to fill before we could leave another one of these useless meetings. I know our experiences and opinions differ wildly. I'm sure you've noticed this as well. But we'll never find a compromise if you remain so rigid. 10 seconds. Natasha was glaring at him with the same darn expression as he always uh, carried. The guy. In any case, I suppose we shall continue this conversation when we meet when we next speak. Tell your wife to send her regards. Goodbye. Wait one moment, Chief Executive. Maruta Kiao froze halfway through, through standing up, awkwardly posed against his chair. The Tache's glares practically scanned him. I take to offense to being blamed for this impassibility when you refuse to adjust your own views whatsoever. Why is it always our border police who must crack down on the drug smuggling, the trafficking, and the crime which your syndicates bring? Why are my countrymen forced to carry the load where their compatriots here grow fat on dirty money and corporate kickbacks? Why is it that you refuse to even acknowledge it? Attach uh, these accusations. You and I know it's true. So does everyone else in the city. I know you need these companies to back you, but I'd at least like to hear you acknowledge it. Murder Kale glared, turning his nose up at the intransigent and subordinate. Acknowledge what? That there is a problem, that you intend to solve it. Even though we both know you don't mean it, I demand that you at least direct your policemen to help my men even when they put the work in. The chief executive picked up the folder and huff, shaking his head. This rude little man has spoken down to him enough. I'll consider it a good day to you. That's not ideal down here. Uh, we really want to beat up the Sudanese first, because the mountains are on the northeastern side here. You guys do anything here, maybe? No? Okay, hold on. At least hold on to Dongola. Dong yes, that's good. Little Tihel, the Shida Shintaro. Whoa, high fight to his Cantonese friends and family. Contemplated the latest set of Sony headphones. Despite the crash around him, the whole fight somehow, somehow managed to get through with his plan to buy a new set of Sony headphones. Now, he didn't go on expecting very much. He heard that his company had been going through more than its share of bad times, being beleaguered by the twin burdens of managing the government and running their own corporation, still. As Gentile thought, they maybe say along the lines of, we know what they want and allow quality to slip, slip some. But the immarubel dictu, as the old saying went, that was not the case. Shintaro uh, grabbed, grasped at the new headphones with an appraising eye and saw that the casing was so strong. He plugged it into the radio and found the sound so as crisp as it had been with his last ones when they were new. In fact, they were crisper still. Best of all, the price was the same as Shintaro would expect for products of that quality. Clearly, Sony has not allowed the recent chaos to get to them. Far from it, they insist instead insisted on producing best-in-class products as they had always done. Whatever happens, Shintaro thought himself, Sony is a dedicated customer to me, even if Marita and Sony go headfirst into the room together. It played out thus for many other customers, too. Nice. Keep, go keep getting more. We're still, we're still masters here. Always be closing. Consolidate sales next works. How many seats do we have right now? Combined, we have 44, which is not enough, in my opinion, but. Just the slicker seats. 5%. Let me try this one. Bankruptcies and closures have occurred all across the nation. From retailers to manufacturers, companies have been forced to lay off employees and shut stores, leaving a once in a lifetime opportunity just for the right rival company. Chun Kong shall replace the void with their weakened competitors have left behind. While they consolidate what little resources are left to them, we shall spread our many tentacles and grasp every corner of the nation. Unfortunately, Chun Kong will be less than able to influence the Legislative Council, but our massive expansion will secure Chun Kong's future in the Guangdong forevermore. That'll be good. Give him time to recover from organization. Some of you guys are moving around, which is fine for us to just wait here. Um, and 
get more strength. Which is good. Because right now we are uh, re reinforcements be high. But even then, I don't want to matter too much. Match reduce, ma'am. Always be closing. How many more days until we have the uh, product cycle? 37, good. We'll get that one done for the next one, too. Please understand. Whatever difficult decisions we've made, they'll be worthless so we do not make the case to the masses. We only hope they understand. Seek additional financing. Wang Yin Fui? Fui? It was one of the bright day in the Zhujin neighborhood in Koshu, but nobody felt very bright, considering the situation, of course. There's another grim news on the radio for lack of any other choice. The assembled Zhujin grumbled ever louder against the man they had once held to be the representative among the five companies, Li Xing. They're supposed to make sure those guys, the, Jap the Japanese guys, didn't ignore our concerns. And now what is he doing? He bows and scrapes left and right and center. Just the same as all those idiots that came before him and ignores the wishes, just to spare his bottom line. Why the heck do we ever think about anything good would come out of having a Zhujin on the Legislative Council? A few voices popped up to the question of the grumbling. Uh, come on, you lot, cut him some slack. The man's outnumbered the leg call, and that chief executive is his is torn three ways between us, the Chinese and Zhujin. Those other two must have held him hostage or something, forced him to cooperate, surely wouldn't. The irate crowd began to shout and shake this. From five voices, the same invective arose. Shut up, traitor, and stop defending that good for nothing. What, what's he ever done for you, that you son of a whore? The son above is how it played out throughout Guangdong. Oh, there goes the Iran and the Shah. Please understand. In these dire times of need and distress, we have achieved and attempted much in our efforts to recuperate the ailing economy of Guangdong. We have engaged in restructuring and consolidation, act upon act, dedicated to the betterment of Guangdong, its citizens, and its businesses, so that we may all emerge from the debris and return to an era of economic prosperity once more. However, we must not neglect an entity which our, public, our endeavor impacts the most, the public. Through all of our efforts and achievements, we have done much to ensure that the workforce and populace of Guangdong do not suffer. This, however, does not free us from the obligation of transparency. We must appeal to the public, our actions have to be explained, and the support has to be guaranteed. It is the utmost importance that the citizen grasp our intent of our decisions, so they may understand that their faith in us has not been misplaced. 30 days. So we get 14, we get 8 more days here, and 22, we get all that done. That actually be really good. I'm not sure if we can actually take these guys out here. Taking out... Ooh, this child would be probably first would be ideal. So we're gonna circle and destroy those divisions because they're gonna be very tough to kill. Very, very tough to kill. 1952, a narrow path. Everyone has their marching orders. It'll be slow, door to door work, but we already know what the people want. Get enough people talking, and the rest should take care of itself. Morita has sent the sales representatives uh, out of his office with a smile and a reassuring clap on the back. Um, it was more confidence than he had had privately, but it was more than he had just had a few months ago. Ooh. Oh crap! I can't read this now. If you're learning about advancements in data storage technology, please go right ahead. How this can fit how many sheets of paper? Yay! Nice. He had to push the marketing and sales team uh, to work over time, working the distribution networks and forecasts again and again, even as he drew up plans for triple shifts, unknown credit purchases of the inputs they needed. There would be a week long marketing push in Tokyo and Osaka's department stores, a single brilliant burst of publicity that would carry them through the arduous door to door sales campaign to follow. Uh, they'd have enough stock to fill a week or two's worth of demand, and then the slower sales drives would give the factory time to catch up. It wouldn't be a blockbuster, but it would be profitable and first to market. All having to turn to the charity of Fujitsu. A charity felt keenly every time he caught another rumor of their whisper campaign across from the sales staff. Uh, taking everything just to keep them on board with Morita and his plan, all in the took it to communications success. Of a success, Morita thought, chuckling mentally. He had a show, his family, that he could run a business, and that he hadn't thrown away his naval career for nothing, that he could do better outside of the family music business, and that his future would be his own. He hoped Ibuka believed in him as well, and one man's trash. Lee Kishin waved his hand, gesturing for his executives to be seated as he entered the conference room in Chung Kong's headquarters. Even if it was, his right, it was his right as a company's president to arrive on time, he wasn't one to stand on protocol, now the situation was so urgent. The projector whirled and clicked through this prepared presentation, and its contents already uh, deeply familiar to Lee from his discussions of the Koshu government complex. Japanese firms were. Uh, fleeing China and drove after the recent scandals in Nanjing, and the Chinese in Guangdong were going home, seeing opportunity for the first time in years. Gentlemen, Lee said, as the lights w uh, were turned back on, if our workers see more opportunities in China, then I suggest we follow them. Uh, the symbol executives took a beat to digest Lee's proposal. A few gripped the armrests of the chairs tightly before raising his hands to speak. Isn't that a risk? The executive stood as he spoke, hoping his presence would buttress his verbal opposition. When Guangdong has its own problems at home, and when both China and Japan are pressing us to take action on their interests, you propose we snub both and expand abroad? That's right, Lee said, uh, instantaneously. Even as Chung Kong is close to our, the government, the government has its own affairs and we have our ours as another man's treasure. It's not going to capitulate them, huh? They're still down there, god dang it. And these guys are cut off, which is actually pretty decent for us. Just 
beat the crap out of them. That's all that matters. Uh, actually, you guys go here, and you guys go here, and we're gonna circle and destroy these two divisions, maybe. Abri. DP victory in Turkey, huh? There you go. There you go. Destroy the divisions, destroy those German divisions. Please understand. And then, yes. Tap additional resources. People must keep spending their commitment to the social welfare has aided them in doing so, but the reserves for the welfare net is finally reaching their limits. Keep funds flowing. The pink porcelain peg must be shattered. All the savings, reserves, and sovereign wealth funds, everything we built up over the years, all must be collected now, every single penny. People going down can sacrifice these reserves for the future, and the future is now. Kept. This guy's finally been balanced. While we've cut funds for almost every government program under the sun, the economists and professional budget managers have come to an agreement. The government's finances are once again in the black. While the people have certainly suffered, we must always remember that the old programs can be renewed, and the cash trip and organizations can be replaced later on. Guangdong is stable, and we've kept our word. That is all that matters now. We can only hope that the people understand that with choices we have made to save them from the oil crisis. Oh, that would be really good. Ooh, profitability. Oh, we'll recover by 10%. Resurgent. Well, we're trying everything here we can. Please understand. Resurgent. Well, we can do this one first, or this one first. Well, actually, we must well do Resurgent, because never bet against Sony Chung Kong. Our prior choices will determine the effects of this focus. So, we'll recover by 0.5% of GDP growth malice, and our GDP malice by 1%. So, that'll be probably pretty good to do first. Capitalism is a harsh, merciless master, and those who cannot adopt with the times will invariably be consumed by the hands of the competition, but Sony Chung Kong will not fall. We'll harness the shifting tides of our present condition and make it the engine of our future success. Nice. Kept. Yeah. Yeah, doing all this stuff would be very important to do, and up in popular opinions. Murta Kale and Li Keqing had barely taken a step into the chief executive's office um, before the police commissioner Amori was upon them, waving a bono jacket of open letters, <clears throat> with one end holding a rolled up poster, and the other, his bald brow furrowed with worry. Let's kill them off here first, then. Um, have you read these, Amori asked, shaking the envelopes in their faces, all just to you, chief executive? Complaints are anything new, Commissioner. Lee waved his hand dismissively, battling away the, uh, the letters with a wry smile as Murta examined them more closely. I know what Ibuka and Kamai say about me behind my back. It's not from them, Kashin, Murta muttered, flipping through the pages he plucked out from Amori's hand as his pa face paled. It's the Chinese, calling you Han Jian for the recent social program cuts we've discussed. You discussed the social programs? We cut them? Um, I agree to these policies, Akeo Lee winced, but turned back to face Murta and Omori with no visible sign of discomfort. I knew this wasn't going to be popular going in, and I'm not complaining just because of a few letters. That's not just a few. The mailroom is full of these, Omori uttered, foreign rule in the poster, a demonic caricature of Lee's face with curses scribbled across the page. We can't be too careful, Chief Secretary. Please consider retaining a security detail. Amori watched Lee's expression tense briefly, while Marita stared at the ceiling, taking a brief step to steady himself. Finally, Lee laughed a bit too brightly. Fine, but my family stays in Hong Kong. But I think we'll end it there. We're in the middle of the problems, but we're at the end of these major, major problems. And it seems like things are going to start turning around for us, even though um, we have all of these problems going on. Ooh, we're actually fair. It's not good. We need to keep going up. But hey, if you enjoyed the video, please consider leaving a like. Uh, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. I'll see you tomorrow when we'll continue trying to improve Guangdong's uh, uh, no, future and the co-prosperity sphere. Thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.